Hey guys, it's a bit of a different video this time, but I got to show you something. So let's take a look in the bag. What's inside? Look, what is this? It's a fully functional Raspberry Pi cluster on a stick, I mean in a bag. But yeah, point is, this one will be useful for the channel. Do you want to know why? interested in why I made it, how I made it and stuff like that. Yeah, keep watching. Okay, so here's a little cluster and uh, this should be the part where I switch on some music and uh, show you some properly shot footage of me breaking a sweat while making the whole thing. But no, most people didn't ask how I made it, but instead they asked why I made it. So let's just go quickly over a few components, then uh, let's uh, talk about why I made this cluster in the first place. So obviously we have a couple of Raspberry Pis in there. Then we have a big power supply. Then we have this uh, power distribution module at the bottom. And uh, actually, this was the most complicated part. That is a PCB I've uh, created. Not really a PCB, but components on a protoboard. And uh, I made a separate video about it. Because, yeah, that was interesting stuff. That provides power for the network switch, the Raspberry Pis, and for the cooler. So yeah, we have a bigger cooler too. Also, what do we have here? We have an SSD right here. It's hiding under those red cables. And actually, that should serve as share storage for the Raspberry Pis. Why do I need share storage? Because uh, this is not a real cluster per se, but like a portable home lab. So it is possible that one of the pies will get repurposed in the process while staying in this uh, enclosure. But still, I format its SD card and whatnot. So it's just nice to have all the data on a shared storage independent from the Raspberry Pis kept together, especially like Docker configuration, application configs, whatnot, whatever you can come up with. You don't have to worry about, oh, I lost my data because I formatted the SD, SD card. No. Also, I will um, experiment with um, booting various operating systems from the SSD because uh, right now you can boot uh, Raspbian OS or Raspberry Pi OS uh, from the SSD, but pretty much nothing else or at least not at the point of making this video. So besides that, what do we have here? Nothing much, you can see a few custom LAN cables. These are just uh, CAT 5E Ethernet cables. Then some short USB cables from Banggood and a bunch of 3D printed parts like the handle, like these shelves and these adapters because the power supply had a lot of extra screw holes but uh, nothing really on the top where you can uh, connect these threaded rods so i made these adapters i'm not sure if people want to have these i didn't really care about uploading them to thingiverse or whatnot if there's a need i can do it yeah but um, i think everyone who builds a uh, Raspberry Pi cluster or something like this portable thing, then uh, he will just uh, follow his own ideas or her own ideas. Okay, that's cool and everything, but I still haven't answered the original question, have I? Nope. So why did I build this in the first place? Well, to be honest, I want to step up the game on the channel when it comes to uh, using raspberries with your home network, home automation, and stuff like that. Because it turns out people are interested in it. 
I mean, especially starting with the Raspberry Pi 4, this little powerhouse, I mean, the Raspberry Pi, became a de facto standard for some people to go to build a NAS, build a smart router, uh, build a home automation hub, uh, build a controller for your smart irrigation system in the garden or whatnot. So yeah, there's a lot of potential and a lot of topics and I want to learn and try and demonstrate uh, a lot of things and make a lot of tutorials based on Raspberry Pi stuff. Also, most importantly, if you watched uh, my videos in the past, uh, you might remember that uh, pretty much all of the stuff I demonstrated, I used to use uh, virtual machines. And um, while it is an adequate way to demonstrate things when it comes to, for example, Ubuntu Linux, it's not always the same as a Raspberry Pi and, uh, or, or a normal server. And people were like, okay, you got me lost at the VM part. Can you do it with a Raspberry Pi? Or can you do it with a NAS or stuff like that? And yeah, here we go. Now I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis. So yes, I can do it and I will do it. So expect a lot of videos very soon. I mean, continuously, right? I mean, every week, sort of. So what topic can you expect? Well, for example, a lot of people ask me, like, can I turn a Raspberry Pi into a media server? Or can I set up a secure storage? Or, as I mentioned before, can I make it into a router? Or can it um, control other devices via network or GPI? Or can it uh, host a security system? Uh, can it be used as a streaming server for your security cameras? Can it be used as a bastion slash firewall to securely access your smart home and stuff like that? So, as I mentioned, a lot of networking stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and uh, interested in this kind of topics, then yeah, this is the right time to subscribe. And also don't uh, forget the notification bell. So you will get notified when I upload more stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching this short video and uh, thanks for your support, thanks for your patience and uh, see you next time, next week. Bye. Oh God. Okay, recording is done. Sun is coming up already, but I need to edit this and... Oh, I forgot the bug. Oh, camera is still on. So, the bag. Yeah, uh, before you ask, no, it's not battery powered yet, but it's portable. That's what the whole bag thing was about. But now that you mention, hmm, making it battery powered, that would be nice. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.